All right, next up we have a distinguished professor of chemistry who got his PhD from Arizona State University. Um, and he is also a prominent member of the Society for the Advancement of Chicanos, Hispanics, and Native Americans in Science. Give it up for Gabriel Montaño. Good morning, fellow believers. I never planned on becoming a scientist. I didn't have a calling as a child. I wasn't blowing things up in the kitchen. I wasn't writing equations on my Etch-a-Sketch. I was a pretty typical kid. I was getting in trouble, pushing boundaries, getting in trouble. Now I'm a lab, uh, National Laboratory Scientist and University Professor, and a proud graduate of Arizona State University. When I look back, I find that I always did have the makings of a scientist. And truth is, most people do. If you've ever asked a question about why the sky is blue, why the leaves are green, why Phoenix is so dang hot, and you look for evidence for an answer, you have the makings of a scientist as well. That's what's so wonderful to see and celebrate here. This isn't a collection limited to the lab coat, donning, goggle wearing, code writing, practicing scientists amongst us. Science and scientific inquiry belong to everybody. In large part, that's what these gatherings and marches across the country are. A reminder that simply put, science is needed and science is good. And for the young adults and youth out there, it's a lot of fun. Scientists don't retire, we just evolve. So why are we here? The biggest reason is that we believe the key to solving the complex problems facing us now and in the future rely on the steadfast dedication and commitment to scientific pursuit. And we further believe that the dismissal of inconvenient facts must end. As was just mentioned, science is not intrinsically political. It shouldn't belong to any party or dismissed by any party when the results are not in line with the political agenda. Science is not the enemy of economic prosperity. It does not seek to destroy industry. Science is not the enemy of religion and faith. It's important for those of us who support science and scientific discovery to remember these things as well. Science is not something we have sole ownership of. It belongs to everyone. Science and scientists cannot and should not work in isolation and be dismissive of those who question the authenticity of science. Instead, we must be open to debate, not argument, and urge skeptics or those who aim to minimize science to rhetoric to engage and discuss. But we can only do so if we too are open to such a dialogue. Now let's be honest, science isn't perfect. We have not succeeded in conveying the importance of science and research to the general public. We have been quick at times to make assumptions of, of of facts and dismissed anyone unaware is ignorant. We have not served as the ambassadors of the great benefits of science that we should. The March for Science is an opportunity for us to begin that dialogue and to open up that invitation. It's also a time for the scientific community to recognize that we as a community have significant work to do. For too long, the scientific community has persisted as an old boys club, requiring a certain pedigree to actively participate. As a result, the scientific community does not reflect the diversity of the society we live in, but looks basically the same as it did 40 years ago. But just like, the science, just like science is not the enemy, diversity is not the enemy of science. I was privileged to serve as, as the president of the Society for the Advancement of Chicanos, Hispanics, and Native Americans in Science for the last two years, which is the, largest, the country's largest multicultural, multidisciplinary STEM society. And just like you may have witnessed eyes rolling and minds shut down by others when raising climate change, many in the scientific community do the same thing when the topic of diversity in science is raised. What's important for folks to understand is that those like myself who champion diversity in science are not seeking an unfair playing field, nor are we seeking to introduce a subjective element into the objective framework of science. Diversity is about optimizing our ability to solve complex problems. Scientific research has shown that diverse teams produce higher quality research than non-diverse teams. Secondly, the data demonstrates that there exist barriers that disproportionately limit underrepresented groups from becoming scientists and performing scientific research. That is why 
diversity in STEM is a scientific issue. For too long has the pursuit of science been more of a privilege than a right. This is not PC rhetoric or about doing the right thing. It's about building the strongest, most innovative scientific workforce possible. The greatest, intellect, the greatest intellectual commodity that we have in the nation is our diversity. Yet we fail to utilize that commodity where it's most needed in scientific research. That is just bad business and bad science. We have an opportunity here today and moving forward to not only bring attention to the impact and importance of science in our lives, but to improve the scientific community. We can and should be reaching out to all those who are not here today, who are skeptical about science for whatever region. But I urge you to encourage the skeptics to engage. I urge you to listen and discuss. And I urge you to welcome debate, not to raise to anger and dismiss. Lastly, I urge you to hold science and the scientific community accountable. Science and science education should not be a privilege, but a right. And let's make sure that every aspiring scientist has the opportunity to make the world a better place, one scientist at a time. Thank you.